Carol Studies here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today I bring you the long-awaited video, the book haul. Yay, I'm finally here to film the book haul. Okay, let's just continue. Um, so before we start our book haul, don't forget to subscribe to this channel, click on the bell to turn on post notifications, like the video if you like the video, and comment whatever you want down there in the comment section down below. You could, for example, comment your favorite book, because I would honestly love to hear what your favorite book is. And also don't forget to follow me on my study gram, Carol Studies. It's all over my YouTube channel. I made sure of that. And yeah, let's start with our book haul. So this is going to be like this. First things first, I'm going to do a kind of like a summary of the book, then a review, and then I'm going to tell you from 0 to 10 what grade do I give the book, considering my experience reading that book. That is going to be something like that, so you just know what you can be expecting for this video. Things first, I just want to apologize for the background noise. It is my computer who's making this loud noises. It's not really noises, but it's like a background sound. I don't really know why. Computer, can you please shut the hell up? But yeah, so let's start. So the first book I have here to show you, where I've probably seen it by now on my YouTube channel, my travel vlog to Madrid. It was my Christmas gift from my parents to me. And when I asked them this book, I was really impulsive because I didn't know anything about the book. I just saw that it had a lot of pages and I'm usually attracted to books that have a lot of pages. So I was really impulsive but it, at the end I was lucky because I really had a great experience with this book. So it is called Imaginary Friend and it's by Stephen Chbosky. Just showing you the book so you can see. This is the Portuguese version, so in your country it is probably going to be very different from this one. And it has a lot of pages, as you can see. I read this in Portuguese. Um, so, this book tells us the story of Christopher, who is a seven-year-old boy, and his mom, Kate, who are both moving to this little town called Millgrove in Pennsylvania. And they are running from his mom, ex-abusive boyfriend, who's Richard. And in this little town, there is... A forest called Mission Street Woods and since the arrival to this little town Christopher feels really attracted to the woods feels like a voice is calling him to go into the woods and one day he goes missing for six days straight he goes into the woods and then he goes missing and nobody knows anything about him not even you that are reading the book you don't just you just don't know what happened to him in the woods but when they find him uh, they ask him uh, the sheriff asks him uh, what happened there and Christopher doesn't really remember anything. He just remembers um, Meeting the nice man and the nice man was the man who showed Christopher the path out of the woods the way out of the woods So he could be found by someone uh, But Christopher's description about the nice man doesn't match any person that lives in Millgrove or near Millgrove So it's like a mystery but since Christopher went missing, when he comes back to his normal life, his normal routine at school, at home, his life completely changes, is not dyslexic anymore because it was, it was dyslexic before, and he's super good at math, he, he has a lot of strength, he has a lot of friends now, he isn't bullied anymore, it's like he gains superpowers, you know? Uh, but don't confuse because this was just a simple comparison. This book has nothing to do with superpowers. So yeah, just forgot, forget that. It was just a comparison that I made. Um, and then um, his mom buys a house that is super near the forest. And even though she tells him not to go to the woods, Christopher hears a voice calling him again and he goes to the woods. And he starts talking with a nice man again. And uh, then the nice man asks him to build a tree house before Christmas and Christopher goes to his friends asking for help to build this tree house. But of course, he doesn't tell anyone that he's talking with this nice man. Um, and then turns out that this tree house is supposed to be a portal to the imaginary world. And in this imaginary world, um, there is a hissing lady who is supposed to be the villain. And there is a um, mailboxes post and deers who are kind of like 
or the deers are helping the villain and the mailboxes posts are helping the villain as well it is a little bit weird you know it is a little bit weird but yeah read it and you'll know it uh and then there's a fever that that's um affecting everyone in this town and that leads to violent attitudes and violent uh behaviors so yeah i can't tell you anything more because i don't want to spoil you so i mean it was a really really good book i wasn't expecting to like it that much actually um and i really had a great journey with it and from 0 to 10 i would probably give it a 8.5 which is a really high grade for this one um and yeah, I really liked it. It was really, really good. I would suggest it to I. Uh, I would suggest you to read it. I, I do want to point out that in the first one hundred pages, you won't get a lot of action, and some people don't really like that. So if you do connect with the characters in the first pages, you are going to love the book. But if you don't connect with the characters, I don't think that you are going to like the book that much. But I do also want to say that in the story, you not only follow the life of Kate and Christopher, but you follow the lives of not every characters that live into this uh, little town, but you'll get to know the lives of a lot of characters, okay? So you'll get to know the thoughts, the personality, the past of a lot of characters, and that is super interesting, and it's not boring uh, for me, it wasn't a list, and I really like the characters, so yeah, read it. It's really good. So the second book I have here to show you is the second book of the Moral Instrument series, and it's by Cassandra Clare. So I can't really tell you much because this is the second book and not the first one on the series, but I can tell you about the world itself. So basically, oh, oh. Before I forget, they have a TV show called Shadow Hunters or something like that. Go watch it. I have watched it and that is the reason why I'm now reading the books because I really enjoyed the show. And then I was like, oh, let me try the books and the books are really much better than the TV show. So I'm going to continue to read the books, of course. I'm really loving it. Um, so... Um, the book talks about Shadow Hunters who are kind of like supernatural creatures, I guess I can say that. They are a mixture between angels and humans and their mission here in this world is to protect humans against uh, demons and vampires, werewolves and warlocks, I guess. I guess, yeah, I guess. But their superior mission is to hunt down demons who want to hurt humans. Who, uh, who wants to hurt, hurt humans yeah i said it right um and yeah this book has um great characters the main character is not my fate I, I mean i really do like her but like she i don't really like her personality <laughs> i think she's super stubborn and i think she's stupid sometimes she's like an idiot sometimes but this book is really good and I still love the main characters. I still love the main character, not characters. Um, and yeah. And I love Jace Wayland and Clary together, so yeah. I don't know what I can say about this, but it's super cool. I would suggest it to you. The second book from Zero... 2 10 i would probably give it the second one probably like 6.5 but the first one i really liked it probably like an 8 or 8.5 because i really enjoyed the first one the second one not so much but it's still good and cassandra claire is a lot of um other series related to this shadow enter world i think the dark artifices and the clock wars clockworks things i don't really know but i really want to read those series as well so just wanted to point that out to you the third book is really special to me because it was actually my first reading in english and it's by stephanie garber and it's called carol i like to see the book so this book tells us the story of two sisters scarlet 
Dragna, who is the older one, and Donatella, Dragna, who is the younger one, and they both live with their dad. Governor Dragna, who is not the most friendly father to his daughters and is a little bit abusive. And since they were children, they have always fancied this show called Care of All. And um, it happens once a year and is hosted by this master legend guy, who is this mysterious guy. Um, and Scarlett is actually going to get married. Her father arranged her a marriage and she's going to marry this uh, guy that she doesn't know from anywhere. But she's super excited because she, fi she thinks that by marrying this guy, she can finally be free from um, her father. And she thinks that she's going to be more independent. And she has always written letters to Legend telling him how much she wants to go watch the show since she was a child. And one day she ends up uh, writing to Legend and saying that she's going to get married. And Legend writes her back saying that he has tickets for her and her sister to go watch the game. So then she ends up in a boat with Julian. Julian is this mysterious sailor. I freaking love Julian. Just want to point that out to you. Um, and when they arrive to Isla de los Sueños, uh, Isla de los Sueños is just um, the location where Caraval is going to happen this year. When they arrive there, they are supposed to meet with Donatella that is supposed to be already there. And I was super confused at this part because I just didn't understand how or why Donatella was already there. Uh, but then they can't find Donatella and they go into Caraval and Julian convinces Scarlett to play the game instead of watching, in instead of watch it. And um, then when they are already into the game, they find out that Caraval this year is going to revolve around Donatella and that the thing that they must find to win the game is Donatella. So if they find Donatella, they get the prize, which is a wish. They get a wish. Yeah, and Scarlett teams up with Julian and they make a team and they try to find clues and try to find Donatella, really. And this book, it has, it includes mystery, a lot of mystery, a lot of magic and also a lot of bonds. You have Scarlett and Donatella bond, you have Scarlett and Julian bond and you have Scarlett with other Caraval players bonds as well, you know? You know what I'm saying? A lot of bonds in here. Um, but this book is really, really good. Uh, a lot of mystery, a lot of mystery. And this book will shock you. I was shocked in a, at a lot of moments and I just freaking loved it. And from 0 to 10, I would probably give it 9 because I really enjoyed the book. And I read it in English and it was super simple, super easy to read not difficult at all and I really enjoyed it and and as I enjoyed this book so much the fourth book where is it okay <laughs> is here legendary which is the second book in the Caraval series and it's by Stephanie Garber again and this cover it's so much freaking prettier than uh, Caraval uh, so I can tell you much about the book as it is the second one and not the first one and yeah, I'm reading it at the moment and um, yeah, I I'm liking it. I mean, I can't tell you much because I'm only at the beginning. I'm at page 58, so I can tell you much. But yeah, I'm loving it. It's really, really good. I would suggest you to read it. Yeah, just, just read it and you'll see for yourself. So for our final book, I have here a very special book as well to show you because it is the best book I've ever read in my life and from 0 out of 10 I would for sure give it a 10 and I do want to point that out that this book does not exist in Portuguese so if you are Portuguese and want to read this book you will have to read it in another language and I read it in English and it was a little bit difficult because it has a lot of vocabulary that I'm not familiar with so it was a little bit difficult at that part but it was not an obstacle at all because it's still my favorite book. And it's Six of Crows by Lee Bardigo. In doing a summary for this book is going to be really hard because I do not want to spoil you at all. So I won't say a lot about the book because I want you to fully enjoy the whole experience about the book, which is really good. So 
This book tells us the story of six teenager criminals and an impossible mission. So, this happens in Ketterdam, which uh, is a city that is ruled by the Merchant Council that are a powerful group of men. And then we have Kasbrecker, who is one of our main characters. Kasbrecker also goes by the name of Dirty Hands because of all of the bad things he has done and all of the, the people that he has killed. And he's a 17-year-old uh, thief and he always gets out of situations, of very dangerous situations. He always escapes and he always gets what he wants, basically. And he has these bad boy vibes, but he's definitely not the bad boy that you're used to seeing in books. So, yeah, in my opinion, you know, but I really love him. He's probably my favorite character. Um, and one day, one of the Martian Council members, Vanek, offers Kaz the, the opportunity to win 30 million crutch. Crutch is the coin in this world. Uh, if he breaks into a prison and rescues a kidnapped scientist who's stuck there at the prison. The scientist's name is Boyul Bayur and he created a drug called Yurda Parem that is for Grisha people. Grisha people are basically people with superpowers and he's at the ice court prison in Fjorda. This prison has never been breached before and no one has even ever tried it because it has a lot of high level securities and is located in Fjorda and Fjordan people are really good warriors and nobody gets out of this prison and they have high, super high level security. And so it's like an impossible mission, but Kaz still accepts the mission and the opportunity to win that amount of money. Um, and he gathers a whole squad made of six criminals. Um, so we have Inaj. Inaj um, also goes by the name of Wraith because she's super discreet. I guess I can say that. Nobody notices her presence and so she works for Kaz um, and for the drags more specifically. The drags are a group of criminals that are ruled by Per Askel, but Kaz Breaker leads the drags just because Kaz does everything, you know? Per Askel is the boss, but then Kaz is the leader because he does everything, you know? Yeah. So uh in edge works for Per Askel slash Kaz. Um and she hears um, the secrets from the most powerful man in Ketterdam and she brings the secrets to Kaz, so Kaz knows everyone's secrets. Uh, then we have Nina, who is a Grisha, an art render to be more specific to be more specific it and she can control your blood flow and your heart and she has these magical abilities uh, and she loves to hit. And she and Matthias Elver, Matthias Elver is another one of our characters, have a past that which I'm not going to tell you enough. I'm not going to tell you nothing about that, that, that past because, again, I want you to fully enjoy the, this experience. Matthias Elver is a prisoner at the Algate prison, which is another completely different prison from the Ice Court. Nothing to do with that. And is between love and what his brain tells him to do. So he has like, he's super confused about what he should do. And he's a prisoner and he's Fjordan. I must say that, he's Fjordan. So, and I, I do want to point out, maybe spoil you a little bit. Fjordan people, Fjordan warriors are people who hunt Grisha. So you can think about it and take your own conclusions about the situation here. So it's between his art and his brain. And Nina and Matthias do have a past, but you'll get to know the, that past later in the story. Then we have Jasper, who is a sharp sharpshooter that works for the drags as well, and is super into gambling and he loses a lot of money at gambling games. And he always fights with his guns and he absolutely loves his guns. And then we have Willen. Willen Vanek is the son of Vanek, which gave 
has the opportunity to win 30 million crutch and nobody really knows what happened between Willen and his dad but we just know that he's kind of like trying to rebel against his father. He's definitely not good at fighting or defending himself but he's definitely good with his brain at chemistry. He builds like bombs and explosives for the squad so it's super important. So this is like an impossible mission and you will accompany the mission with our characters but the thing is there's there's a lot of action but you will get to know the past of our characters in the book not it's the action is not really important i must say i think you you will want to know more about the about the characters past and their pasts are really 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 emotional you are going to be super emotionally invested in this book as i was i was so emotionally invested in the book and i don't know it has a place in my heart and this book is so freaking beautiful i don't know what what it is but there's just something so beautiful about the book i can't even explain it to you but i just freaking love the book and just freaking read it read it in english because it's it's freaking amazing. I freaking love the book. And I already ordered the second book, Crooked Kingdom, because this is a duology. And I'm waiting for the book and I'm super um, excited to get my hands into the second book and read it. And yeah, this book is literally the best thing I've ever read. And I'm freaking happy that I decided to read it because it is really, really good. And... Yeah, and all of our characters have different pasts and different personalities and their pasts made them into the characters that they are now at the present moment. So yeah, their pasts are really interesting and really emotional as well. So this was the video, I really hope you liked it and enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching and bye, see you next video!